Shit! In the newest patch of World of Warcraft, for the first time ever, Horde and Alliance players can team up to do dungeons and raids. Now despite this, over the game's history, members of the opposing factions have teamed up hundreds of times. And there's yeah. one particular event of Horde and Alliance members joining forces that is barely ever talked about. And it's in an ancient Warcraft book written by Chris Metzen called of blood. Holy shit, I didn't even know this existed. Oh my god, I never even saw this. This is written by Metzen? In honor. Wow. The story we're going to talk about today involves the noble paladin named Tyrion Forgering and what? the honorable orc named Etrig, and how the brotherly what? bond they developed with one another was one of the first ever instances of Horde no and shot teaming up. I never even knew this, what the fuck? So when I say this book is old, I mean it. It came out 21 years ago, before Warcraft 3 even- Holy fucking shit! I'm old! Came out. Also, really quickly, in this book, Etrig is green, but in later iterations of his character, he's kind of gray, so just for consistency, let's just say that he is gray in the book. Okay. okay. Look, when your universe goes on for this long, yeah, some stuff kind of just falls through the cracks, okay? So, timeline-wise, this book is set between Warcraft 2 and Warcraft 3. Right. Years have passed since the Second War has ended, and the humans are rebuilding after a devastating conflict. That would make the once sense. once enraged savage orcs have been thrown into internment camps after their defeat. Tyrion Fordring is the governor of the settlement of Hearthglen in the Kingdom of Lordaeron. The paladin was a skilled ruler and never let his town's defenses falter during the war. Although, as of late, there are rumors from various human kingdoms that the orc forces are on the move <laughs> once again. <laughs> Tyrion mounted on his hardened warhorse named Mirador and patrolled around his settlement to see if he could find any suspicious activity. Okay. Tyrion had found an abandoned guard tower. On closer investigation, it seemed like someone or something had been living there. Okay. He need to return to Hearthglen to report his fight. Dude, I thought the first time that Horde and Alliance worked together was in Warcraft 3 with like Thrall. I didn't even know this shit happened. Things to the rest of the kingdom before. Hey! Look who it is! My blades will rend your flesh! Damn! Tyrion had slashed the orc's That's thigh, me, not you. Crippling him for a moment. The paladin could have dishonorably butchered the orc right then and there, but that would be against his paladin code. If he was to Pussy. win, it would be a good, fair fight. <laughs> Damn! Wait, what the fuck? Oh, that was a mistake. <laughs> God, Paladin sucks so much. This is so sad. Like, dude, he lost to a brick. He actually lost to a brick. That's so pathetic, man. Wow. Sad, honestly. Oh. Fantastic. Yippee! See, like, the, or the orc warrior? I mean, he literally got his legs slashed open. And he continued the fight. You know, he just had to stop for a second or two. Tyrion gets hit by a brick. He's got to lay in bed for months, man. It's just pathetic. It's pathetic, man. Tyrion had woken up in his own bed. Yeah, his with wife, no armor, Karandra, too. True. Had told him that he just appeared at the gates of Hearthglen, unconscious, bloody mm -hmm. and bruised, and tied up to his own horse. That was four days ago when Tyrion had just now he regained bubbled. his consciousness. Yeah. The paladin put two and two together and realized that strange orc had saved his life. Murmurs and rumors spread across the town of Hearthglen. The only thing that could have gravely wounded their lord like that 
must have been an orc. Perhaps a whole war band of them had breached into their lands. Yeah. The two previous wars they had with the Greenskins had put them on edge, and some protested that they should be proactive and send out hunting parties this instant. But Tyrion was their ruler, and ordered that no such thing would happen. It was just one singular orc, and that was all he saw. He would figure out what to do with it as he saw fit. Damn. In the early morning hours of the next day, Tyrion mounted back up on his horse with his warhammer and snuck out of his keep to investigate the abandoned guard tower in that strange orc once again. Hello. Uh! That's how bad paladins are. Man, dog, you know, it's like I'm feeling you, but I'm not feeling it, you know? Yeah. The two warriors sat within the tower that was once their battleground. The orc introduced himself as Etrig. He lived alone in these lands, Holy deserted shit. of the Horde. He left the bloodthirsty warband yeah. after his sons were sent into an unwinnable battle by a dishonorable chieftain who only seeked good standing within the Horde, rather than seeing his people prosper. Holy you see, shit. The orcs had long forgotten the way their ancestors lived. They once lived by an honorable code, maintained relative peace. Bro, and this makes me so sad because it reminds me of back whenever the good, the story was good. That was crazy. That was a long time ago. Damn. And, and like, the thing is like, this story is not like overly complex or anything. It's like Conan the Barbarian, the story is great. Fucking Darth Vader shows up, kills everybody, he's a kid, he gets older, and then he kills Darth Vader. <sniffs> Boom. There it is. That's what happened. Ship their ancestors. Tyrion thought to himself, clean. maybe perhaps the orcs and humans were much more similar than he was led on to believe. But the perversion of warlocks and the drinking of demon blood made them forsake their honorable ways. And the only type of orcs the humans knew were these bloodthirsty green monsters they had become. After years of pointless war, Etrig just wanted to live the rest of his days in peaceful solitude. Damn, I, I can- As Lord my of Glen, Tyrion vowed yeah. that he would make sure that no harm came to the peaceful orc ever again. By his paladin code, wow. he would ensure this promise. The two warriors saluted each other once again, and Tyrion traveled back to Hearth Glen. But little did he know, maintaining peace would not be so easy. Holy shit. What the f*** <laughs> are you doing, Tyrion? Oh, the paladin no. surprise, his superior, Satan Dathrohan, had arrived. Satan Dathrohan, by the way, his real name? Balnazar. Yeah, that's fucking ba that was fucking Balnazar. He's a goddamn dreadlord. He was on high alert of orcish activity because recently an orc named Thrall had led an uprising at one of the prisoner camps. What? So he traveled over the Hearth Glen to investigate this strange activity. The yeah. people within the town were already suspicious of Tyrion since he had that run of the orc. And then he just like sneaked out in the early hours of the morning a couple days later. You know, perhaps he was colluding with the enemy. Okay. Satan Dathrohan demanded that Tyrion show him where this orc was. He was at an impasse. Tyrion vowed to keep Etrig safe, but he could also not deny an order from his paladin superior. Fuck that. So, with a heavy heart, Tyrion agreed, led Satan and his men to the guard tower where his new friend stayed. Simp. Obviously, Satan and his men were not there to shake hands with Etrig. He was imprisoned wow. and would later be tortured for questioning. Any information they could get what on the, the rogue orcs in the area would be critical. Uh. <laughs> Are we was the bad guys? Rage. This unknowing betrayal against Etrig went guys, against I think we're the bad guys. Paladin stood for. He needed to save his new friend for the sake of his own honor. Damn! Oh. Tyrion was thrown in a cell for his treachery. Fuck. Why on earth would he be trying to help a beast such as this? Fuck. He would later be escorted to- That won't be the last time that Tyrion gets his ass beat by a demon. Stratholme. 
where he would stand on trial for his mm -hmm. betrayal to the Alliance. Yeah. Tyrion stood alone at his trial. Was that Uther? His judge was Uther, the Lightbringer. Oh my god. The supreme commander of the Paladin Order. Holy shit! The jury was Dalen Proudmore, Archmage Antonidas, Archbishop Alonsus Fowl, and Arthas Menethil. Tyrion explained Damn. the reasoning for his actions. That Etrig was one of the most honorable opponents he had ever met. How he is different from the orcs they had fought in the past two wars. He also explained his promise to Etrig, and how if he turned his back on his word, he would betray his honor as a paladin. That's true. Yeah, yeah he's, he's guilty. guilty. <laughs> Uther and the jury really didn't care about all that because at the end of the day... <laughs> it's like, yeah. Okay, man. Yeah, right. Tyrion was still colluding with the enemy. True. But they gave him a chance to repent and receive a full pardon if he condemned his traitor's actions. Tyrion took a moment to consider, but he promised that he would forever be a soldier of the Alliance, but to disavow his oath to Etrig, it would go against everything he stood for. With a heavy sigh, Uther did what he had to do, and declared Tyrion excommunicated from the Knights of the Silver Hand. Think about how much of an idiot Uther is. I honestly think that if you put it in context, Uther is probably the biggest idiot in the entire story. Because you think about this, right? So Tyrion is no Tyrion was a very powerful paladin. He probably could have helped uh, at Strathlone, and he could have maybe made it to where Arthas didn't have to use Frostmourne. On top of that, Tyrion ended up having to fucking clean up Uther's mess whenever he let Arthas go fucking hog wild and turn into the Lich King. Uther's a cuck from start to finish. Yeah, he is. He's a stupid bitch. With the wave of his hand, Uther drained the holy magic from Tyrion, wow. filling his banished heart with despair. And yeah, um, I guess paladins can just do that? I'm pretty sure Dude. this is the only instance in the lore where the light has been Dude. stripped from somebody like this. Dude, but Uther uh, sucks, anyways, man. Anyways, all of Tyrion's titles, property, and really all of his belongings That's why he would lives be there? stripped from him. He would live the rest of his days exiled from his kingdom, forced to survive in the wilderness, alone, and without mercy. See, like, and then Tyrion had to do what Uther couldn't. Remember what happened with Uther in Warcraft 3? You just kill them like a bitch. You kill them like a little weak bitch. That's what happened. And then Tyrion, and, and that was, by the way, whenever Arthas killed Uther, Arthas did not have the Helm of Domination. He was not the Lich King yet. Tyrion killed him whenever he was the Lich King. Like, think about that. Yeah, he lived like a bitch, he died like a bitch. True and real. Later, Tyrion went to visit his I wife, hate Carandra, Uther. who disavowed his whoa, wait, decision. Wait, what? Later, Tyrion went to visit his wife, Carandra, who disavowed his decision. What the fuck? She now had to raise their son, Talion, alone in Hearthglen, all because of Tyrion's stubbornness to protect his honor. What the- The excommunicated paladin stepped out into the Dude, wilds. what a stripped bitch! Of his belongings, abandoned by his loved ones, and nothing but a hammer on his back. Oh my god. He had lost everything. Now he needed to make his honor right. Got him. Ah. Bro, this is actually cool. Why don't they just why don't they do this shit anymore? This was this is fucking cool, man. Tyrion had picked some impeccable timing to rescue Etrig from his execution because Thrall yeah. and his liberated band of orcs were currently pushing an assault on Stratholme. With the guards distracted, it allowed Tyrion to sneak out of the city and into the forest to tend to Etrig's wounds. That made sense. Tyrion inspected the orc's body, 
to realize he wasn't even breathing. Paladin got on one knee, begging the light to answer him. Light, grant me one final blessing. Give me the strength to shatter these bonds. The powers of the light was not something that could be stripped from him. It came from within. I love how this now is the theme song of Paladins. To maintain the values of a light imbued paladin. Yep. And it is with this undying faith you would achieve the impossible. Thanks, Patrick. Holy shit. I got him. I thank you. Uh huh. Tyrion had channeled all <laughs> of his holy power into resurrecting Etrig from his untimely death. While resurrection might be a very common thing in game, lore wise, this is an incredibly rare event that only happened a small handful of times in the universe's history. It actually, it happens whenever there's a retcon. So yeah, like basically, uh, you know, there's like something like, oh, well, things don't really make sense here. Okay, uh, yeah, I thought he was supposed to be dead. Uh. You know, it is what it is. It's a plot device, yeah. Tar, friend. Thrall and his band of orcs introduced themselves. He was the war chief of this new horde Holy that shit. shared similar ideals and respect of honor like they did back on Draenor. Yeah. They were actually assaulting Stratholme to rescue Etric, who was a legendary warrior they wanted to add to their ranks. Etric agreed to join them, and Tyrion turned to leave. Dude, this is I, like I'm just I'm so fucking upset, man. Like this story, what I like about it so much is that it's so simple. It's just pure fucking like just like it. It's like a, a story all about masculinity and honor. That's it. That's all it is, and it's so good. Stopped him. Holy shit. We are both bound by blood and honor, brother. Oh I my will God. not forget you. Huh. <laughs> and that is where our story ends today. But you might be wondering, did Tyrion and Etrig ever cross paths again? I think so. Hell no. Across what? all of WoW's expansions, they never interact. I, I kind of assumed that like maybe he would go like, I'm like, oh, maybe he would go to, like, the Argent Tournament Grounds, you know, whenever the Horde was in North... What? ...did once. Tyrion did interact with Thrall, but... But what, 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 didn't he, like... But, uh, I mean, like, Tyrion, like... ...mentioning the first time they ever met never happened. But it's not like this book never happened. In Classic WoW, Tyrion is still exiled and hanging out in the plague Yeah, lands. I didn't know why. He would later why. form the Argent Crusade and play a huge role in defeating the Lich King, and then he died at the start of Legion. <laughs> well, ah, ah! But maybe we can go into more detail. That was fucking pathetic. That was actually fucking pathetic. That Tyrion died. Guys, Croesus was like one of the first bosses you fought. In Nighthold. It wasn't even like an end boss or anything like that. He was one of the first bosses. Detail on those events at a later time. As for Etrig, he was an extremely minor character until he got a little bit of screen time in Mist Fandaria. See, I love characters that are like that. They're like characters that are they're there and there's like a big story. It reminds me a lot of like an Elden Ring character. Where it's like, oh, Etrig is here. Who is Etrig? And it's like, okay, well, there's like a whole book of who this guy is, but he's just there. More screen That's time so in cool. the Battle for Azeroth expansion, where he's the leader of the Strong Guard Warfront, where he says things like, You can choke on your retribution, Turalyon! True! Lord, to battle! Crush those cowardly castle dwellers before they breach our gates! So yeah, uh, he's not so peaceful these days, it seems. I wonder if what what's so funny to me about that is you know that they wrote those lines with literally no context of the character development. Like probably no context whatsoever of the character development. There's like no real it's like for example, you you saw how like Tyrion got Etrig out of Strathlome 
And the reason why he was able to escape and there weren't that many guards there was because Thrall was attacking. Well, the same thing would have happened now, except for Thrall wouldn't have been attacking and Tyrion would have still done it and it just would have happened, right? Like, it, it, yeah, it just would have happened. And, and that's it. But that doesn't stop the short story from being a that's neat so little badass, gem in Warcraft man. history. Holy you gotta shit. realize, this book came out before Warcraft 3. Yeah! The game where Warcraft really started to form its own identity. So this book of blood and honor is a neat little time capsule of when this universe was coming into its own. And is one of the first times peace was ever established in this world of Warcraft. God, bro, like, those were the fucking days. Holy shit, those were the fucking days. Remember that? God damn, 20 years ago. 20 years ago. God damn, it was fucking amazing. The nostalgia? Yeah. God, man. I, I, I love, dude. I, oh my God, I love this video. I had no idea about this. Watch the Patrick video again? God. <laughs> but it's just, oh my God. It was so good. Give us more of this. Yes. Like, l let's get more of this. Like, yeah, let's do it. All right, all right. We'll watch it real quick, right? We'll watch it real quick. But, like, losing Chris Messel was massive. But what I like about it, again, it's like Conan. Conan is so fucking good. And it's not like some Game of Thrones shit. It's a story of, of honor and, and fucking battle. It, that's it, man. It was so good. Yeah, exactly. It's fucking amazing. Uh, let me see. All right, Patrick uh, Ashbringer. Okay, yep. There we go. All right, let's watch it. Conan is toxic now. Let me link this video again, okay? This is this guy is doing the Lord's work. Platinum Wow is doing the Lord's work. I love this. This makes me so fucking sad, man. Like I just it reminds me of like fucking like back in the 90s and you'd listen to like that fucking Warcraft 2 Tides of Darkness fucking on like the old CRT monitor and it was like all the orcish clans fighting and then Warcraft 3 comes out and like Thrall was like the most fucking like we played on Thrall. Zach and I played on Thrall server because of how badass Thrall was. That's what it was. God, I'm so fucking upset. Like, small correction, Etrig did help the Argent Crusade and Wrath of the Lich King as per Tyrion's request, but it never interacted face-to-face. -face. Okay, alright, that's good. At least something. Uh, you know a massively missed opportunity. Etrig to be a thrall in Garrosh and the tournament grounds. Yeah, why not? The anime versions of the book is fucking crisp. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, I just, I, I wish that they would get back to stories like this. Like, fucking just stories like this. Like, the good shit. One day you can buy WoW. Yeah, yeah, one day I'll do that. Uh, one more Platinum Lab video about Northrend Zones. I'll watch another one at some point, okay? Like, I'll, I'll, I'll do another one. Would you throw all of what you have to go back to 1995, but with your mind now? Bro, I would fuck it. I would do that for anything. Yeah, e even if I didn't have my mind now. Like, uh, uh, in a second, I would do that. Oh my god, that would be so good. I wish that I could fucking do that. That would be amazing.